This episode of Openly Hostile Opinions has been brought to you by Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access provides state-of-the-art multi-layered security with advanced privacy protection using VPN tunneling. When you use Private Internet Access, not even your ISP can tell what you're doing online. Prevent throttling and other people from eavesdropping on what you do. If you want to help out Openly Hostile Opinions and get yourself this wonderful VPN package, go to ohonet.pw slash ohovpn Again, that is ohonet.pw slash ohovpn Sign up for private internet access today. Hey everybody! What's up, motherfuckers? How you doing? Welcome to the show. My name is Casey. This is Jay, and this is Openly Hostile Opinions. And that band. Hey, hey, hey! Hang on. Let me get. Let me get all rock and roll DJ for a second. And that last band oh. you heard <laughs> was a band from the frozen north in Winnipeg, Canada. I forget their fucking name. It was Dark Messiah. <laughs> That's such a great thing to say. Sorry, <laughs> sorry Dark Messiah. Uh, you know what, though? I really do like... I've, I've actually been jamming out to them. I think they're pretty cool. They remind me a lot of Lamb of God. Yeah. They got that kind of groove metal thing going on, yeah, too. Yeah, a little black metal-ish sort of styles to it. You can tell they're from uh, a cold area of the of the world. I ain't getting no black metal. That's just straight-up <laughs> groove. Uh, it reminds me of... Uh, Ashes of the Wake. I, ca I can't really call myself a black metal fan, though. I've never really gotten into it. I guess the closest, and, and people might kill me for this, is but is Abigail Williams. That's the closest I ever got to it. Uh, <laughs> here's what you If you want to experience true black metal, here's what you do. Uh, tremolo pick everything. Go, yeah, yeah, in the bottom of a trash can. <laughs> that's that's black metal. And hate, and hate religion. You, Definitely hate and religion. Yeah, that's where all the anger and hate comes from. <laughs> See? So you gotta you gotta hate the religion. But I don't I, even listen to super hardcore black metal. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I never really got into it. I just I don't know. Uh, if you want to start someplace that's fairly accessible but still pretty good, is it, it, they actually call it black and roll? Oh it's my a, god, are you fucking kidding? black and roll? It's it's kind of a style of of, of black metal, but it's kind of groovy. Uh huh. Uh, check out Satyricon. Groovy. Oh fuck you, Windows Update. Satyricon might be up your alley. Give them a Satyricon. shot. Satyricon? That sounds like something you cleanse your butthole with. <laughs> yeah, check out their album, Volcano. You, you'd probably like it. Volcano. I'm not kidding. Check it out. <laughs> Seriously, you'd probably like it. Uh, so, how y'all doing today, all none of you that are here? <laughs> I know. Where's everyone at, man? No one's here. Eh, it's probably our later time slot. We are going back to our normal time eventually. Yeah. Um. It's just I, I got this new job. I'm going through training. Today was my first day. I See, I'm doing tech support. Uh, for, for a well-known cable company. And uh, today was my first day taking calls, and God, I sucked. <laughs> well, why was it so bad? Well, you know, it's just... It, it's not that I don't know how to fix the issues so much as use all the tools that I have to use to do it. Like, I can sit here and, and administer my own wireless equipment mm -hmm. by myself just fine, you know, I know what's probably wrong, you know, what I need to do to fix it. I can set up port forwarding for myself. I can do all that sort of stuff. But when I have to do it for this job, I have about 47 different things that I have to do at any given moment. And all while I'm trying to avoid dead air time and, you know, keeping the customers engaged as humanly possible. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Fuck that. <laughs> and, and even worse than that is, like, I have to do all this freaking documentation. Which you're supposed to be able to do on the call. Yeah. But as soon as they hang up with you, you know, you're supposed to be ready and available for the next call. Eventually. Right now, of course, I I put myself in like an after call status uh -huh. so I can finish shit up. But yeah. within the end of the week, I need to try to like be not doing that. Yeah. And it was just. It's, See, I, I would get brutal. bored, and I would do things like be Indian and stuff. Thank you. Hello, my name is John. Oh, I don't. Ha I didn't have time to be bored. <laughs> it was. Uh, so today was your first time that taking calls, yeah. And I've done this type of work before, uh -huh. but it's been a long time. Yeah. So it's not the people that bother me. I, I'm okay. I can deal with an upset customer. I get it. Yeah. Um, 
I had to deal with that before when I did this type of work. It's just balancing all these tools. <laughs> and, and, you know, another thing, when you're doing, like, tech support, the thing that, that bothers me about, about when you're doing tech support of any kind is I feel like when it comes to, to technology, it should be like a car. If you drive, you should at least know how to change your oil. <laughs> you should know how to change your tire uh, if it blows out. You know, things like yeah. that. Basic things you should understand. Yeah. I never understood the whole, I don't understand this, and I don't want to understand this, and, like... Yeah, especially old people. Like, I bought my mom a phone last Christmas, and I'm, like, trying to tell her what the fuck's going on with it. And she's, like, she's like over there trying to, like, fucking cut pieces of turkey off and stuff. I'm like, Mom, get the fuck over here. Because older people, I think the reason why they don't get technology is because you show them what's going on, and they're just like, oh, okay. And they're, like, over there dusting, like, their fucking... Their eyes necks. glaze. They yeah. don't care. Yeah, exactly. Their eyes glaze over. And then, and then you get pissed off at them, and you don't want to hate your mother. But, like, explaining technology my mother i just would have stabbed her in the throat back in the 90s i tried <laughs> to teach my mom how to use a computer and it was bad yeah uh it was pretty funny with his mother i was talking to her one time and uh she was explaining something on the computer and i was like just use google and she's like i don't have that on my computer i'm like oh <laughs> see it's bad <clears throat> what's up dark Messiah? how you doing man? hey how well, the hell are you we just got done uh giving you your little plug there uh, yeah um we were just talking about how explaining technology to old people makes us want to kill ourselves <laughs> um, and then recently I went over for my sister's birthday party okay and my mom's like hey I don't have Facebook on my phone anymore and I'm like what do you mean she's like I can't get in my Facebook there's no icon here anymore so I'm like looking through it and I'm like you don't even have Facebook installed on your phone and she's like yes I do well, she must have uninstalled it yeah it happens yeah but she didn't believe me she's like I still have Facebook so I go and she's using Facebook through her browser and I'm like, Mom, you're using Facebook. To, we'll, we'll, and she, while I'm explaining this, she's like fucking making sure everyone has enough gravy on their mashed potatoes. <laughs> I just, you're a terrible son. I, I, dude, you know what I mean, though. <laughs> like, I'm trying to explain this shit to my mother. And she's like all Susie Homemaker. She's a great host, by the way. <laughs> like, when you go over to my, I'm actually going over to her house for her birthday tomorrow. And she always makes sure there's coffee, cookies, candy, fucking, you know, surge, whatever. <laughs> Jeez, bring me some shit. <laughs> hey, man, I always want people to come over. Like, I, uh, I have, um, my brother's birthday in November. My uh, nephew's in December. Mine's also in December. My sister's is in January. My mom's is in February. So it's like I'm so fucking broke all like for this. I'm still broke, dude. <laughs> I just, oh, man. Dark Messiah is watching the Jets game and watching the show. You're about the only one. Nobody's here today. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Casey's girlfriend's here. No, she's not my girlfriend. Hi, Megan. <laughs> hey, uh, so you guys have any plugs? Uh, keep in mind, too, that we uh, rebroadcast this on uh, on our podcast audio only. Uh, we have a lot of listeners that way, and then we have uh, some people on YouTube. So if you got anything you want us to... To plug any upcoming dates or anything. I know you just got done with a Canadian tour. We'll plug anything, but butt plugs. They ain't my thing. <laughs> I'll try anything once. Oh, man. I, I, it's funny that you're actually in here, Megan. You usually, you usually just like listen from the outside. You don't come in the room. You're, get, you're getting more comfortable, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes I, she's just here and listening outside the room. Yeah, I know. She's, she hasn't been able to make it. She has her son tonight, so she can't come over. So, uh, no butt sex tonight for me. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I'm still here. <laughs> oh, Bend over. Christ. Bend um, the fuck over. Speaking of getting fucked, um, it snowed. <laughs> it snowed here. I don't have um, my soundboard. <laughs> yeah. There it we go. snowed here again. We got like three inches. Like, uh, <laughs> Casey gets that a lot. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Bend uh, over. Hey, Megan told me, uh, I may not be able to touch the bottom of a tuna can, but I can break the sides out. <laughs> <laughs> Film it, please. Uh, uh, no. No, there would be no pegging going on today. Um, yeah, so Jay uh, gets a hold of me. He's like, hey, man, I need to ride into work. Or not work. Uh, somewhere tomorrow. I think he has an appointment or something. Uh, tomorrow, can you give me a ride? I'm like, yeah, sure. So I fucking go into my truck to try to pull forward so Jay can pull in the back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, You're not yeah, helping yourself. Yeah. We're talking about gay sex and shit. I'm talking about him. I'm, I'm going to pull it into the bag. Yeah. So I get in my fucking truck. I try to turn my keys. It's fucking dead. I left my goddamn lights on. I'm so pissed. <laughs> I got jumper cables. I'll try to see if I can get next to your car without getting mine stuck. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to try something. And the thing that sucks is since there's three inches of snow over there, he has this tiny little, you know, it looks like a transfer. It's a roller skate. Yeah, it's a roller skate. And um, 
so hopefully my neighbor, Ashley, the neighbor's home because her uh, boyfriend or future husband <laughs> has a really big truck. So uh, I need someone to pull next to me without getting stuck so they can jump my car. <laughs> uh, Dark Messiah says we have things in the works. Okay. Fantastic. Hey, you know, it's there's there's no rule that says you can't be the band of the week more than once. So uh, when you've got those things in the works, let us know. We'll put you back on again. Yeah. Frankly, I enjoyed your shit. I've been jamming you all week. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been told this before. You guys remind me a bit of, like, the good period of, of, of Lamb of God. I loved Lamb of God when they first came out, dude. Yeah, uh, that black they, label. That song. It's a straight rip off of Pantera. Oh my god, it. yeah. <laughs> but that yeah. whole album's a rip off of Pantera. They, those you guys can, those guys kinda have like an Ashes of the Wake yeah, kind of era yeah. sort of sound too. Ashes of the Wake was a good album, but I, I like As the Palaces Burn and uh, Oh yeah, As the Palaces Burn is my um, favorite. The, the gospel album. I can't remember the name of it. New American Gospel. Yeah, I love those albums. And and it's so funny too because the the, the one the whole part of the band, the singer and everything, just you could tell love Pantera. <laughs> and then the drummer, you're just like, th- the only band that the drummer listens to is Death. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest with you, uh, from talking to Randy, Randy's not even a metalhead. Oh, really? Yeah, he's he's a hardcore guy to the, to the bone. A what? Hardcore. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, to the bone. Like, you know, he, Old school, like, mad uh, ball and shit. Oh, like yeah, that. like, well, his biggest dream in the world right now is, is he, he's filling in mm-hmm. for some of the faster songs for Bad Brains. While, while HR is recovering, he had to have some brain surgery or something along those lines. Yeah. So uh, HR can do the slower songs just fine, but when it comes to some of the faster songs, he mm-hmm. can't. So Randy's been actually touring with them and, yeah. and filling in, which I, would be amazing. Lamb of God, dude, blew the fuck up. Like, when I first knew Lamb of God, they were so poor, the bass player couldn't afford to fix his bass. And I have this old video of them where they're so dirt poor, and you can tell they haven't showered in, like, weeks. And the bass they player... They still look like that, though, to be <laughs> fair. <laughs> yeah, they're from Virginia. But uh, <laughs> the, the one bass player, his uh, bottom string uh, key broke on the top. So you look at his base, and it just goes up, and there's a hole there. He just ripped the key out and tied the string in the hole. I just don't understand how you tune that, though, exactly. But with their music, does he ever use the bottom string? <laughs> Are you talking about the top string? No, the bottom string. It was the bottom string that he had. Uh, the key was broken, so he just tied it in the little hole. <laughs> Dark Messiah says, holy shit, that was a compliment. That's for sure a first. No, nah, man, you, you do. Like, the vocals, of course, are, it, it, you know, Randy Blythe sounds like Randy Blythe and no one else does. Yeah, he does, actually. But, um, yeah, the the music reminds me of quite a, quite a bit of that mm-hmm. that genre. Yeah. The, and then, the groove metal. Mm, and Lamb of God, like, they even talked. They were like, dude, we were just bored and we started something in our basement for fun and now look at them. They're like touring with uh, Slayer, I think, actually, for Slayer's farewell tour. Yeah, Slayer's packing it in. I, yeah. it's probably probably about time. I know. I mean, like, it's yeah, been fucking what 30, 40 years. What, 30, 35, 35 years nah. they've been together. Almost uh, as old as us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you know, and, and with Jeff being dead, like, okay, they they that's did their who little... he was. I couldn't remember because I, I think I was talking Jeff Hanneman. I forget who I was talking about that, but I was like, some someone died, and I, I'm surprised they didn't call it quits after that. Well, you know what? They've had Gary Holt filling in for him for a long time, even when Jeff was still alive because yeah. he was having medical issues. Uh-huh. Uh, on the upside, though, that means we get Gary Holt back for Exodus, and Exodus is like my favorite thrash band ever. <laughs> Um, so for my own selfish reasons, like I'm sure Gary Holt gets a much better paycheck from mm-hmm. Slayer, but for my own selfish reasons, Gary Holt's coming back to to Exodus full time. Mm-hmm. They've got Zetro singing again, which makes me makes me happy where I pee. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, on the on the Exodus front, things are all good. Yeah. Although you know, um, right before Zetro joined Exodus again, he was in a band with his son called Hatriot. And uh, I Patriot. thought they were really good. Co- it, it's it's ripped out of a line from uh, an Exodus song. I know, but it just sounds like it sounds like uh, a name that a gladiator during the Roman times named his chariot. <laughs> no, it sounds like something from the American Gladiators. <laughs> sounds like one of those beefed up losers. Oh man, they need to bring that show back. That no, show they were talking amazing. about it, but it never happened. They're bringing in a maniac back. Really? Yeah, which I cannot oh, wait Jesus for. Jesus Christ! They better get all the same voice. American actors, Gladiators. That that show was so fucking awesome man and i remember i was watching dodgeball and they were making fun of it yeah. when he was in her he's like laser blazer because <laughs> like, that's what all the fucking names of the american gladiators were they were just named after lights <laughs> there was such a there was a controversy a while back but i can't remember what it was all about 
Uh, well, if they're from Hollywood, it's probably raping people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, steroids, of course, but I, duh. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, man. When I found out the Hulkster, the Hulkster did steroids, I... I felt bad, man. Yeah. When that um, first came out, because I was a little kid, I believed. I believed. You know, Hulk was always like, "That's right, eat your bro- vitamins, brother." I believed. <laughs> see, see, Jason was telling me about that. That Hulk Hogan back in the long, when he first started, used to do commercials about eating your vitamins. It was his catchphrase. It was all. I can't remember what the fuck it was. It. Uh, that, that's right. He always said, "Say your prayers and take your vitamins." Oh my! God. That was all of his thing. But then it came out, you know, that he used antibiotics, uh, anabolic steroids, and I was like, "No, Hulk, no!" I yeah. didn't believe it. That's I was a, a little that, kid. That's what he meant by taking your vitamins. <laughs> your vitamins. <laughs> um, oh, I did. I was. I was such. A, I was such a bitch. But like I said, I was a little kid. I, I believed. I believed wrestling was real. Yeah. Oh yeah, so did I, man. But and you I'm know a... what? We grew up with good wrestling. I know. We, we had did. Hulk. We had Rowdy Roddy Piper, which oh, was yeah, my man. fucking favorite. He was awesome. He was even uh, good in They Live, and he can't act for shit. No, <laughs> no. Speaking of speaking of uh, wrestling, did you hear uh, Ronda Rousey is is leaving UFC at least temporarily really? and joining the WWE? Good. You know, she she got her fucking ass kicked by a girl you know twenty years older than her. Um, I would Holly leave. Holm did beat the fuck up. <laughs> but you know what? Holly <laughs> Holm lost the next match. So yeah. Oh, uh, that's the thing. Holly Holm, you were telling me, just trained, you know, night and day just She for just Ronda wanted Rousey. to beat Rousey. Yeah. And then she just. But was then like, uh, Amanda, Noon- uh, Amanda Noons. Amanda uh-huh. Noons. Noons, I want to say it is. She, she kicked her ass the next time. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. See, uh, I don't blame her. Whatever. I watch UFC. Oh, way a more lot than of I people should. that, you know, quit the UFC that went to WWE or WWF. Uh, it worked out for him. Kurt Angle. Uh, uh, he those guys in, didn't quit the UFC and join WWE. No, it was the other way around. I'm just using it as an example. Goldberg. Um, Kurt Angle, he was a professional wrestler in like the Olympics and stuff like that. He went to the WWE, um, mm-hmm. played a really great villain. Like Everyone hated him. Well, that's because he's a weasel. Yeah, he was. He was, he was just a fucking weasel. Um, Ken Shamrock, uh, you know, he always had the fucking... The four leaf clover, or the, what was his finishing move? I forget what the fucking name of it was. But uh, didn't didn't he go nuts? Which one went nuts? I don't. They all do. Uh, Chris Benoit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right, Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit's the one that went fucking nuts and killed his whole family and shit. <laughs> Them steroids, man. They don't just shrink your testicles; uh, they shrink your amount of relatives. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's the thing, man. He didn't just take himself out. He took his whole fucking family out. So he must have been going nuts. Well, he, I remember. Chris, well, he didn't want to be lonely. Yeah. I remember Chris, Chris Benoit's finishing move was a flying headbutt. Like, he would get on the top turnbuckle and fly and headbutt you, like, face first. And I just think it took its toll. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it, it's been, it's been you know, working out. So I, I say do it. And, you know. Uh, when we were little, I remember there was female matches, but there was a lot less of them. They didn't do them all the time. Now, from what I see, because I really don't watch wrestling anymore, from from what I see, they do a lot more women's stuff. Maybe I, I don't know. I just, so, I haven't watched it in years. Yeah, so good for her. China was a badass. Oh like, yeah, she she died too. Her no, she <laughs> oh yeah, she did die <laughs> yeah, recently. Like, she didn't kill her whole family though. No, she didn't take out the whole family. <laughs> you know yeah. the other one I love too, which is kind of in my later years of wrestling before I I, I logged off. This is long after I realized it was fake and just enjoyed it for the entertainment factor. Was Mick Foley? Oh yeah, that guy's a that guy's a fucking brilliant genius. Oh yeah, but he's insane. And then that's the thing, like it was fake, but dude, some of that shit they did, you could tell that they straight up sacrificed their bodies for. Like, oh yeah, I remember there was a cage match between him and the Undertaker. Okay, and Mick Foley, uh, he was playing Mankind at the time. All right, mm-hmm. he pulled out this huge bag of tacks. And yep. just threw them all over the fight. You could tell they were taxed. They were sticking to their legs and their shoes and everything. You could tell they were real, okay? So they end up on the top, and the Undertaker choke slams him through the fucking top of the cage into the fucking mat, and it broke the stage. That was actually an accident. It wasn't supposed to let go. But... Oh, really? <laughs> right. But, but but see that's the thing you yeah yeah uh, dark messiah knows what's up he's like holy shit that was dude, a good match that was yeah, insane it was. and you knew it was fake but you were just like that was wasn't fake that was the 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 <laughs> he he slammed him right on top of the trap door yeah and it gave way yeah and he fell down there like that was not intentional but he he kept it together because he's a fucking professional yeah. and he got a professional up. psycho but a professional and he gets up and he just has all these thumbtacks stuck in his back and you can see like spots of blood and everything like that and 
Oh yeah, because he was he was part of the uh, the extreme wrestling federation, oh, yeah, I yeah, believe, yeah. beforehand. Um, Mick Foley, he he wrote a book even about it. Uh, he was saying about how there was a lot of um, he did a lot of you know just small time thing. They'd be in like a high school gymnasium with like just a bunch of folding chairs, and it was like extreme. Um, right. Yes, Tag. This is our seventieth show. I know we've been doing this a long fucking time, man. Oh, I see Latina Angels here. Yo, where the hell is your man candy at? He's usually our <laughs> man, cheerleader. Man candy. We need that motherfucker in here. He's uh, our cheerleader. Dark Messiah says, holy shit, that was good. Yeah, it was a good match, dude. I, I fucking... And see, and, and that's the thing. People, you know, oh, it's fake. But but that's the thing. It's still entertainment. The WWE is anything but wrestling. It's entertainment. And that's why people watch it, because it's so entertaining, dude. South Park did a did an episode of that a while ago where they right. got all into the storylines. It was Dude, it was amazing. Like, Triple H... When I was younger, Triple H was such a fucking scumbag. <laughs> Man, I remember when we were young, he was still Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Yeah, and then he, he got with uh, Vince McMahon's daughter, Stephanie, and he just turned into this evil piece of shit. Like, I remember he used to, like, come out with a sludge hammer, just beat people with it, and then, like, win the match with it and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> he was trying to stick his tongue through his bottom lip. Everybody thought he was just smiling. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Mick Foley was just a, 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 an insane psychopathic genius. Yeah. To this day, uh, you know what? F- fuck, fuck whoever the hell Oprah or whoever's gonna run in twenty twenty. Twenty twenty, Mick Foley. <laughs> let's let's make it happen. And that's the thing. I I heard he, his book is really really good. I it is. A, I read a little bit of it, but I didn't finish it because uh, reading makes me fall asleep. But um, I heard it's really really good. So if you enjoy anything like that, check it out. I also remember um, a fight with Kane and the Undertaker, and they lit the outside of the ring on fire, <laughs> <laughs> and they were like taking their arms and like putting them in the fire and shit, like burning, like for real, dude. You can see like the Undertaker just had this huge burn mark. Of his like uh-huh. his, and people like oh yeah fuck it oh, the Undertaker's the bad I can't uh, believe he, fl- he he was he my favorite finally retired <laughs> in fact we actually did that on this show god damn we've been doing this a long time yeah I know I remember that when he retired we we didn't we play like some sad music yeah we did because he was my favorite I even sort of liked it when he did that whole like biker thing oh <laughs> it, it wasn't it that it, no no we played the we played the sounds from it they made it so dramatic when he left but you know what. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did do that. Yeah, okay. Because they, uh, they did make it really dramatic. Dark Messiah says, damn right about my uh, Mick Foley 2020 comment. You don't get a vote. You're from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Just come we down. get to ruin everything, and you get nothing to say about it. <laughs> your wife your wife showed up. That's hey, funny. how's it going, wifey wifey? Hi, Jay's wife. How are you doing? Um... Yeah, just, Somebody needs to watch us today. We have no audience today. Yeah, our band's here. Go figure. The band comes in to join us today, and we got no audience. <laughs> I know that's the, that's the funny thing. It's fucking bullshit. <coughs> no, but like but you, you know, what? maybe they'll love us and they'll share us with their fans. Yeah, and we need like, more Canadian fans. I love Canadians. Yeah, they're all I so do. nice. <laughs> Actually, I've known some pretty asshole Canadians, but they're the funniest people I've ever known in my See, life. And I heard that I don't know how true this is, so don't take this. You feel, know, feel free to clarify for that, us. Um. I heard from from the nice Canadians when I've said, you know, I've heard that Canadians can be really mean. They say it's mostly northern Canadians that are mean. I don't know what that means. So take it as you Don't will. worry about us. Eh? It's, 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 it's those northern ones up there. I, I'm really sorry you had a bad experience with those. Yeah, and it's even <laughs> even Family Guy was making fun of how nice Canadians were because uh, Stewie found out that Santa Claus wasn't real, so him and Brian take a trip to the North Pole to find Santa Claus, and they break down, and this Canadian guy is like, hey, take my snowmobile, and he's like, if you want to, take my arm, too. So they just cut his arm <laughs> off and are driving with it. Um they come for a piece of this. <laughs> oh, my, oh, man. Band has got a swollen head. <laughs> the State of the Union. is. Oh, is that tonight? Yeah, that's on tonight. What the? F- oh, who cares? Yeah, who cares? <laughs> like, let, the, let the fucking win. The State of the Union is. It was, sucks. Same as usual. That's what we should have done. We should have watched that live. I didn't know that was No, not. we shouldn't have. Uh, Remember, we tried to stay away from politics. Yeah, I know. But politics are so funny these days. It's hard not to stay oh, away from God, We yeah. do a pretty good job, though, actually. <laughs> for, we we for do try to stay away from it pretty well, I got to say. We, I mean, we make the occasional joke. Yeah. 
Uh, actually, it's not even like I'm not sick of politics because of this show. I'm just I'm sick of it because that's all I see on social well, anybody media. Anybody talks about yeah, and it's just like oh my god, I'm so sick of it. Next, next election, dude, I'm digging a hole outside. And I'm just spending the whole time <laughs> in it because I like that guy that we covered that just put earphones on and didn't want to know the election results. Like I just want to be like that. Like just no. That that guy had that guy had the right idea. Uh, speaking of that, do you watch the Grammys last night? Do you watch the Grammys at all? Uh, I watched like five minutes of it and right. I turned it off because I realized that I had better ways to suck my soul out through my nose. Because I, I, I've heard this numerous, numerous times, but... Um, Nobody talented ever wins except for Adele. That bitch is talented yeah, as fuck. Yeah, Daft Punk won one year, which I really enjoyed because everyone was making fun of them. Like, oh, you can't play music. You're just like trying. And then they came out with that really bluesy. And they're like... It was funk. Yeah. we Get your goddamn genres together. Whatever. Go fuck yourself. And then they're like, well, look, we can play music. Oh, we won album of the year. Go fuck yourself. I love that. That was amazing when Daft Punk won that. But uh, yeah, so I guess... I don't know if it's with all this rape going on in hollywood or whatever but the grammys <laughs> all the rape <laughs> there's too much rape in the world but um the grammys the oscars a lot of things are like really going downhill like the grammys they said had the lowest ratings of all time last night well it's all bullshit and we all know it yeah exactly well, last year fucking megadeth wins a grammy and they pay they'll play the worst rendition of master of puppets i've ever heard <laughs> First off, if you're going to play Master of Puppets, play it right. Second off, Dave Mustaine has nothing to do with Master of Fucking Puppets. <laughs> that just shows how much they don't care. They, they didn't. They didn't just fucking know. But, um, Although that that is probably, while I'm a bigger Megadeth fan than uh, Metallica fan, mm. uh, that is probably the quintessential thrash song. <laughs> Master of Puppets, there is no better thrash song. That is a song. great fucking tune. I would jerk off to that every time I used to hear it. Um, yeah, but uh, Thanks I, for sharing. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, I didn't share my herpes though. Um, yeah, so everyone's saying it's the worst Grammys. It was horrible. Some peop- some guy won album of the year that no one even knew. Who um, the hell would that be? I don't know. <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> Obviously. I, I didn't recognize him. Um, Kanye West wasn't even there. Never, I guess that's what everyone was pissed off about. Okay, uh, well, Kanye West is a nuisance when he's I know. I, and, like, I didn't even know. Like They were showing pictures of him. That motherfucker won Grammys? Was it, was it the Grammys or was it the MTV Music Awards when Tim Comerfeld from uh, Rage Against the Machine climbed, climbed the scaffold? That was the MTV Music Awards. I remember that. Yeah, well. that was that was great. That was late '90s, I think. Yeah, he it, just like they were doing the award ceremony. He just turns around, and starts climbing the wall. He was protesting that uh, I think it was Fred Durst once. Uh, the, the oh, really? something once. Yeah. Something. <laughs> yeah. What you gonna do now? Fucking you know what? Like Fred I said Durst. though. Like I said, though, now that I can look back on that shit with rose-colored glasses, I hated it the first time around, but I look back on it now, it's like, oh, no, dude. Rolling, rolling, I love Limp Bizkit now. Like, I can't get enough of them. And it all started, I'd say. It was so fun. Oh, yeah. I'd say about five or six years ago, I was at a strip club, okay? And the strippers were pretty good looking. I have a weird taste in women. I like, like, just, like, you can feel the daddy issues coming off of them. (laughs) Like, they, I like your everyday kind yeah. of woman. In order for them yeah. to sleep at night, they have to wear their dad's cologne because they're they're just so fucked up from it. And this girl comes out just covered in You're tattoos. Broken. Yeah, I know I am. Uh, just covered in tattoos, black hair, piercings, the sexiest fucking bitch. And I was like, holy fuck. And then Lip Biscuit started playing, and I never liked Lip Biscuit so much in my life. And I and that's what I realized. I was like. This music is so much fun. <laughs> it is. It really is. When you go, you know, and like Cold Chamber, I, I oh, fucking I never Chamber. admitted the liking Cold oh, Chamber. I've always loved them. It was one of my uh, one of my fucking guilty pleasures. Yeah, Loco. Yeah, that song is fucking amazing. I've always Me Loco. Yeah, that, that song is just amazing. Nothing. It was new metal ish, but it's like it was just. Oh, all, it was new metal. To it fuck. was all over the fucking place. Like he's just like I'm gonna go. Like you don't. He sounds like Beavis. Like well, same thing as Corn. Yeah, it, it's just like oh, it was so. Jane I didn't say boring, boring women. women. I said I like I like I like your normal looking woman. I like the oh, girl next me. door. I don't like not me. I like tattoos, piercings, fucking just like I said. You could just smell the daddy issues. I hate piercings. I, I'm so weird. Like I'm uh, all about well. tattoos, obviously, but I fucking hate piercings. <laughs> and, and see, I'm the so thing strange is, is I like any piercing except. Um, Eyebrow piercings, I think, look dumb, especially on women. I hate nose piercings. Those are the worst. Yeah, I don't really mind those. Um. Clit rings are fucking annoying. Oh, like, oh! I always thought they'd be. Cool. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. Oh, uh, I was. I was. You uh, know where my mind goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Amanda loves them. Clit rings. You love clit rings. Awesome. Where the hell are you been hiding it? Because I've been checking. <laughs> 
um, they're so sensitive that you have to be gentle around them, and I hate that. Like, when I see a pussy, I'm fucking destroying it. I am not, you know, like, like, you know, I feel like that Muppet with the chef hands, like, <laughs> like, I ain't, I ain't being soft with it. Like, I'm, like, fucking, like, you know, fucking, you know, getting the meat tenderizer hammer out. <laughs> yeah. It's like that little thing that stops the door from opening. Yeah. I'm, like, fucking using a rolling pin on it. I'm barking, like, DMX out. I'm, like, <laughs> I mean, like nibbling on it and shit, and it's just like when when they have a clint ring, you can't do any of that. It's just it's fucking god awful. I hate it. Amanda says I tattoo myself. I'm not boring. Jay is. Uh, yes, actually, my wife did all these. For those of you who don't know, because she's a badass, she's done all my tattoos. I'm her guinea pig while she yeah. practices. Jay's the guinea pig. Uh, speaking of which, hey, I'm about due for some new ones. Uh, I was dark- say she hasn't done um. Well, she's been super busy. Uh, yeah. Uh, dark Messiah says tattoos for the win. Uh, Megan says you just enjoy abusing things. I do, man. Yeah. I do. I'm not like I. I've, I'm not a domestic abuse person, but I love. Except for in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Except for the bedroom, I love rough sex. Like it, it doesn't matter. Like I'm fucking. You know, I'm pulling out medieval weapons and shit, and using them, and like saying un- unhand thee, and just like doing weird. Like I still whatever. think it's creepy. You have a mattress behind your couch. <laughs> I do. But see. For people that don't know my house, it was supposed to be fixed up before I move in, and my landlord just quit. <laughs> like yeah, he did, he just up. stopped fixing. He has my no house bathroom up. door. Yeah, I have no bathroom door. Um, my heater is a trailer park heater, so I went through. He never told me that. So when I filled up my tank of oil, I went through the whole tank at sixty-eight degrees in three weeks. And I'm like, why did I go through so oil? And I find out I have a trailer furnace, so I had to use a coal stove. I still don't understand why that would burn so much. Because it's a fucking trailer fucking heater trying to it. fill a whole house. <laughs> oh, so it's running extra hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because I had a trailer with one of those heaters, and that fucking ran good. Oh, yeah, they're good for trailers, uh, but not for whole houses. You know, I have a double-story house and everything like that, and it just sucks. That you'd never use the upstairs for. Yeah, exactly. So, Except for our project, which will never get finished. Yeah, so I, I never really set up a bedroom, so... uh I just have a bed behind... It's a rape den. <laughs> <laughs> Megan says it's a rape den. That's fucking great. It is sort of rape. Casey, rapish. you have a rape den. It is sort of rapish. I remember the first time me and Megan had sex, I was like, I was like, she must like the rape den feel. <laughs> so we're good here. Yeah, I literally have a bed. Who behind, else but Casey? Behind my couch in my living room just for sex. <laughs> yeah, you sleep on the couch, don't you? Yeah, I like sleeping on couches. I've had neck problems my whole life. Um... We're all I, weird. Yeah, I know we are. I, I sleep on the couch, too. <coughs> I, I just like it. It's my better. stepdad sleeps on the couch. We're all fucking weird. Yeah, I, I just like it, and especially because, of, like, the back of the couch, I like, like, turning around and just, like, laying again. Yeah, something. yeah, you well, I, mean? I need to, because otherwise I lay on my stomach and I wake up in pain. Yeah. Because I'm too fat and it bends my back. <laughs> I just, I'm honest. I just, I just like it. I don't know. Um... But, uh, you know, when Megan comes over, uh, it's sort of hard to sleep on the couch, so we, like, go on the bed sometimes and just watch TV or... <laughs> the cold rape ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I just... I don't know. It, it's... I, I'm glad Megan doesn't mind the rape ten, because uh, my house looks like a... Uh, uh, like a f- old frat house. <laughs> he never sleeps with me, Amanda says. Could you clarify? <laughs> it's not... <laughs> It's not that I don't have sex with you. I don't physically sleep in the same room because I sleep on the couch. What is wrong with sleeping on the couch? I don't know. I love sleeping on the couch, Dark Messiah. Um, you guys are in a band, so you've probably slept on a lot of couches. Yeah, these, <laughs> these guys have probably slept in vans. Yeah. <laughs> I remember um, in a car. W- when I was in a band one time, we were doing a tour down south, and we had to stay in Tennessee at this guy's house named Coffee. You're the only 10 I see. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> We didn't even know his name. We just do him by coffee. And uh, he had no place. <laughs> you guys are lucky. You're not all on somebody's wall. Oh, dude, it was wall. horrible. Somebody should have made you guys into a fucking lamp. And we walk <laughs> in, and we go, where are we sleeping? And he goes, in the basement. We walk down the basement. It's just concrete floor. There's water down there dripping, and he has all these moldy egg crates just laying there. I'm like, I'm going to the van. See you later. <laughs> it, it, looked like, it looked like something from a Tennessee or Tennessee. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, you're lucky you're not a lampshade right now. It was horrible. And then this girl um, that was there was sitting in a corner with her legs spread, and you could just see her vagina for some reason, and she never said a word. It was so weird, uh, so strange. She was so ugly. (laughs) KZ78 says, in band camp, camp I slept on my own. (laughs) Are are, are we having like an American Pie story here? 
So, Dark Messiah, do you guys have any uh, interesting tour stories? This motherfucker here used to go out on tour and apparently ended up almost in the lampshade. Yeah, I, I fucking... The tour was fun. It's just miserable. Because yeah. you're like, you were three dudes. You have no... Mo- well, our band was only three piece. Um, I remember, That's because your fucking guitar yeah. player had enough ego uh, for three I remember people. waking up in Georgia, and it was so fucking hot. And I just woke up, and there was gnats so thick. You could barely see through them. It was the mo- It was so disgusting, and I just crawled out. And was like, Ugh! and for some reason, Georgia stinks. There's this smell to Georgia, <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> so it doesn't quite smell like a Georgia peach. Yeah, it doesn't. Like, it, and if you look at a map, there's the Georgia's really big on the east coast, and then on the west coast, there's a little piece like this, and that's what we always used to go through to get in the Florida. I think they call it the Panhandle yeah, or some, some shit some like that. Shit like that. It only took about forty five minutes to drive through, but that whole forty five minutes smelled like shit. <laughs> like it just I don't know what the fuck it is about Georgia. I think there's a lot of swamps there or something, but it just smelled like absolutely hooker asshole. Oh sure, he has a good story. Man, we had two guys hitchhike from Red Deer to Calgary to see us a second time. Holy shit. Man, you had group you had male groupies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm following the band, man. Uh, Megan says it makes you feel at home about the sex den. Yeah, it wouldn't <laughs> surprise me. <laughs> um, oh, you people. I, I, you people and your naughtiness. Uh, and that's the thing. Being in a band, I'm actually pretty lucky. Nothing really bad happened to us. There's a lot of stories. Except of, for the day you quit the band yeah. and threatened to walk home. Yeah, I remember. I forget. We were, I think we were in Georgia. Yeah, we were in Georgia. And uh, I got Georgia. I'm I got, walking home. I got a huge fight with a guitar player, and I'm like, "Fuck you! I'm walking home." And I, I was so mad. I started walking home from Georgia. <laughs> like to to be fair, the guitar player was a jackass. Yeah, he was a jackass. He still is a jackass, yeah. I'm sure. But oh, he got a hold of me the other day. Oh, good didn't, lord! Didn't say a fucking word to him. <laughs> he texted me and he goes, "Hey, it's Gordon. I got your number for your mom. Um, is this your number? I have a bunch of pictures for you." Probably from your band. Yeah. Dude, you should bring him on. No! Dude, it'd be no, great! No, we are Y'all not. could know ahead of time what a douche he is, and we'll no. all just laugh at no. him. No, when someone does me wrong in life, I get rid of him, and that's exactly what I did with I am guy. the same exact yeah. way. I fucking... I, I got rid of him. I don't want to ever be <laughs> around him again. He treated me like shit. He is great for entertaining stories, though. Yeah, he is. I he, think I've told this story before, but fuck it, I'll tell it again. One time he was at at my house and uh, we were having a party. He got drunk, and uh, Gordon's one of these people that when he drinks he pees. I'm sure y'all know the know people like this. Uh, Casey's got a few pee stories too, but Gordon pees. Uh, Gordon wakes up and walks over to my heat register, you know where the the forced air hot forced hot air heat comes out and pisses in it. And I try to wake him up like Gordon, what the fuck are you doing? He's like. <laughs> I'll be done in a minute. No! What are you doing? <laughs> well, anyway, I finally get his dumb ass back on the couch. He pissed all over my couch. He pissed on my heat register. I thought I had it all cleaned up, but you know when somebody pisses in your heat register? That's the gift that keeps on giving. I know, because once it heats up, it smells again. Yeah, once it starts kicking the heat Yeah, pissing. I used to live with him and used to bring all these girls over and piss all over him and shit like that. They'd wake me up and be like, can I do laundry? Gordon pissed on me. <laughs> it's just like, Jesus Christ. Come on, we got a washer downstairs. Uh, Dark Messiah says we almost lost our bass player. <laughs> that sucks, man. As a bass player? <laughs> what would you have really been missing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we make fun of bass players a lot. I am one. I don't care. I can say it. Actually, the band I was in, we didn't have a bass player. Um, Yet again, because Gordon is an (laughs) egotistical asshole. And Um, that's not just because I would have gladly played bass for you or anything, but just saying. uh, I I actually, we were playing um, some shows, and I remember talking to this one band, and uh, they said uh, one of their scariest stories was is they were sleeping in the van, and they had the windows open because it was really, you know, cold or whatever. Well, it was really hot. Well, one of the vans, it was one of the windows that flip open a little bit. Um, he just wandered off. <laughs> he just wandered off. <laughs> That's a bass player. <laughs> Must be some good drugs in Canada. Um, <laughs> and he wakes up and he hears this rattling. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? And he looks up and there's this knife. This guy's hand through the window with a knife just going like this trying to hit someone. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I would fucking shit myself. <laughs> Can you imagine waking up to that just a hand going? <laughs> like, It's like he wasn't <laughs> even close to anything. He was just trying to stab someone. I was like... <laughs> Like, what was that guy doing, like, waking up? It was like, you know what? I haven't stabbed anyone in a while. I'm just going to reach. Because if you stab someone, it's not like stabbing someone was going to magically unlock the door. <laughs> so the guy could get in. He was just fucking like, 
trying to I just don't get it. Looks like a cover of an Exciter album. <laughs> yeah. <it's>, like <laughs> imagine waking up to that though. You'd be like, what the fuck? Oh man, there's so many. It's kind of like that story Sagan told us. Our friend uh, Sagan Amory from the band Hail Sagan. Hail Sagan. <laughs> anyway, uh, she was telling us the time that she had to squat out in the middle of a field and some band. Oh yeah, band just pulled that. right up and just like, hi, <laughs> just staring I, I at her. I forgot about that. Yeah. She was oh yeah. It. Hey man, I I remember um, I was at Allentown one time and I was walking to go get cigarettes and this fucking weird guy came up to me. He's like, "What are you doing, buddy?" I'm like. Oh, uh, looking for cigarettes. Uh, I'm just trying to find a story. He's like, there's one right this way. And he started walking me down a dark alley. I was like, I'll find one by myself, buddy. Yeah. Like, he was going to kill me. You were gonna I knew it. You're going to lose yeah. a kidney. You're going to yeah. wake up in a bathtub He's filled like, with ice. It's right down this way. It's like an alley this big. There's, like, fucking, like, no lights in it. And I'm just like, no, buddy, I'm good. You were going to wake up in a bathtub uh, yeah. full of ice with a note called the doctor. There's actually a movie uh, with Claude Van Damme in that. And I forget what it's called, but it was pretty good. <laughs> he, Jean Claude Van Damme? Yeah, they steal his kidney and he wakes up and he has to, like, fight to get it back and it's of course like, he does <laughs> it's really good actually uh i seen a really fucked up movie speaking of movies i was bored i remember i, I had ice cream in my freezer so i got really excited uh, <laughs> so you're such a sugar whore <laughs> i know i am um so i tried to watch a movie uh on xfinity on demand and i found this one called cell that, that was not a plug <laughs> <laughs> We have no affiliation with Xfinity yeah. on demand. <laughs> but plug. Oh, do you have Comcast because it's faster? <laughs> uh, Bill Slowski. I love those commercials. Actually. We're uh, old. Nobody remembers that shit. Me and Megan were laying in bed last night, and this Geico commercial came on, and I can't remember it, so I looked it up on YouTube, and uh, it was people at a um, uh, fucking aquarium, and they were looking at the manatees. <laughs> Did you see this one yet? No. <laughs> and um, they were wearing shirts like, come at me, bro. Um, I just want to cuddle. And the, the manatees guy, were? Yeah. Okay. And they were like manatees and novelties. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> it was so, so funny. So stupid. I know. I was laughing my ass off. But anyway. Somebody who smoked a lot of pot <laughs> came up with that. <laughs> they were like manatees and novelties. I'm like, oh, man. It was it was hilarious. I Missy was, just popped in. Hey, up, Greg Missy? is going to join us again one of these years. It's just <laughs> he can't do it because of his work schedule until we go back to our normal time, which should be in another week. Two weeks, two yes. Weeks? Um, but yeah, Hopefully. He, he'll he'll be back. It's just it's hard for him right now. That bald we, motherfucker. Yeah, fucking bald bald. He was cracking us up last week. He's like, "Why don't you tell those kind of jokes when you're here?" <laughs> it's because he's ba basically just waking up when he comes on the show. Yeah, it still surprised me when he was like, uh, "What did he say?" Oh, when he when he said about getting raped in jail, I was like, "You were almost raped." He's like, "Yeah, you didn't know." That. I was like, "No, you never told me." <laughs> uh, Sagan's amazing. Would love to do a show with Hale, with Hale Sagan. Uh, just shoot her a message over Twitter, man. She responds. Yeah, she uh, uh, she was on our show one time. She she uh, joined us through what was it uh, Skype or whatever. Whatever. Yeah, she was on on with us through Skype. She told us a bunch of tour stories. Um, I'll see if I can find the the link to it. You guys should watch it. It's pretty cool. She gave us a lot of insider information. She told us about why you know in today's day and age when everybody is able to digital digitally distribute why a Label is still very important. Some things I didn't know, which was really cool. So uh, while Casey rambles on here, I'll try to look up that episode and send you a link to it. Uh, yeah. uh, I do a lot of rambling. He's a rambling man. Um, oh, good Lord. <laughs> so um, I was all excited. I, I got ice cream and stuff. And I, I, I said I saw this movie called Cell. All right. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson was in it. I was hey, like, oh, I thought we were going Dragon Ball here. I'm such a nerd. <laughs> Think of the Cell Saga. So I'm like Samuel Jackson in it. I watch this motherfucking movie. <laughs> uh, John Cusack was in it, and um, John Cusack's in an airport and his cell phone dies. So he gets on a payphone. He's trying to call his wife. All of a sudden, everyone on their cell phones start getting this weird signal, and it fries their brains and turns them all into zombies, and they kill everybody. <laughs> it was fucking insane. Like it was crazy. But the whole movie sucked because the ending was god fucking awful. It was horrible. They did not explain where the signal came from, if it was like an attack on America or anything, or if it, it was so fucking weird. And it was like um, the, the phone basically, uh, when it fried their brain, it turned them into computers. And when it turned them into computers, it made them a signal. And they signal and use their cell phones through their mouths. And uh, it sort of turned them into robots because at night their phones would turn on and they would fall asleep and listen to the Troll of Lull song. 
<laughs> and, that's, and that's how they would re-energize their batteries. Like, it was such a fucking weird movie. So if you like weird movies like that, check it out. It's just called Cell. Uh, don't get it confused with The Cell with that gen- weird Rihanna movie or whatever. Do you remember that movie? Uh, no. The Cell or something. I think some pop star was in it or something. Maybe Aaliyah? No. Wasn't there some pop star named Aaliyah? It started with like yeah. I, I think her name. She started was with, in the '90s. Yeah, sort of. It's showing my age. <laughs> All right, so uh, the episode with uh, Hale Sagan, uh, where where Sagan actually joins us, is the link there in the chat. If you want to check it out, Dark Messiah. She she's cool chick, man. You can just like I said, shoot her a message on Twitter. She's our friend. Um, I could maybe shoot her a message for you too. It's Jennifer Lopez. Okay, it's Thank Jennifer you. Lopez. Full kids. Sorry. Gold digger came taco, into mind. Taco, 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 so good. Gold digger came into mind. Jennifer Lopez, that's who it is. Because Megan, of course, she knows about that movie. <laughs> we actually have been in contact. She was on her tour with Mushroom Head and still responded. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she. Oh, got, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she talked about how she was on tour with Mushroom Head. She yeah. sounded really cool. Yeah, I would have. Th- I heard things. <laughs> uh, Waylon Revis w- was less than complimentary uh, about the way things went down with their their breakup uh apparently the the drummer kind of runs the show and he and waylon did not see eye to eye i guess drummer of a band actually runs the show that's that's what they say that is so weird (laughs) Uh, that usually doesn't happen it's usually the singer or a guitar player yeah, no, it's um, like he, there's this band called Nora. I like way old school hardcore. They have a song called No One Takes a Picture of the Drummer. <laughs> it's a great song. That's why I switched from bass kid to guitar. <laughs> you know, bass okay. players don't get chicks. Yeah, Jay's like, I want some pussy. <laughs> I, I got so any. much. I got so much pussy being a lead singer. I'm not even joking. And you didn't even <laughs> look at the fucking band or at, at the fucking audience. You just dude, faced backwards. Got, dude, and fucking... the thing was, is we weren't even a popular band. We were just a small band that did some tours here and there and shit. But I got so Set, much. Then you played pussy. grindcore, which got, is hilarious. <laughs> I got so much pussy. It was so easy. You know what's funny? Oh. They were a grindcore band, right? And they had, what, eight, nine, ten songs, something like that you guys played in a set? Yeah. It took, uh, I, I helped Rody for them one time. It took us longer to set the shit up than their <laughs> set. Our songs their were set only. set was like, over in like two minutes. Yeah, our songs were only like a minute 30. Uh, and our set would only be like ten minutes long or five minutes. Because our drummer, he played so fast. And he had really extreme ADHD, like horrible ADHD. So playing the drums, he would like, we bought him drumsticks one time. I'm not joking. That were like this thick and he still broke them. Like at band practice, I would, I would have to stand. Me and Gordon would have to stand way back because he would hit his cymbals so hard. The pieces of cymbals would crack and shoot off pieces. At One cut my cheek one time. It was horrible. <laughs> what like, fucking gauge was he so, playing? I, I don't know, dude. He, he, I remember he bought these cymbals one time, and they were like unbreakable. These cymbals, he broke them. <laughs> like, of course he did. He, he would break. We bought him aluminum fucking sticks, and he broke them. Like, and and that's why we couldn't play longer and make our songs longer because our drummer got tired too quickly. Uh, and, like, it was just, it was god awful. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Messiah says, oh, you're a bass player? I'll just pull these back up now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, man. Uh, yeah, and the other thing, too, <laughs> the other thing, too, uh, with that is, uh, remember when we told Derek that uh, the drummer from from Napalm Death uses triggers. He was so sad. Oh, it broke his heart. He was so sad. It broke his heart because he he loved Napalm Death because you know he's like they don't use triggers. Everything's in blah blah. blah. So we went to a uh, show one time like that, um, and right in front of us, we were right in the front row. Uh, they were setting up the drums, and this chick came out and started setting up triggers on his drum set. I'm like, I'm so sorry, Derek. I just look over. Oh, I, lo- I love telling him. I just looked over, and Derek's just staring, and I just imagined that Simon and Garfunkel song. Uh, that De- played. Derek wasn't there. It was me, you jackass. Oh, yeah. Playing and like playing in his head like, hello, father, hello, son. No, I remember. He came over to your house. Uh, <laughs> he came over to your house, and I, I'm like, can I tell him? Please tell me I can tell him. You're like, go ahead. <laughs> like, uh, like so Danny funny. Herrera uses triggers. No, he doesn't. I was like, we saw it. Yeah, we saw it. Dude. We were standing right there, and they were just setting him up right in front of us. And I just like, I had to break his heart, man. And I just remember, like, he was so sad. 
Uh, it's like someone killed his mother. My <laughs> wife says, I remember one of your shows, Casey. Yeah, that's right. You were there for that one. It's when we had a show in Muncie, I think, you guys came, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you come to the... The Ritz, the yeah. stupid theater. The horrible That fucking sound. Brooks cut, put a hole in the wall by <laughs> hardcore dancing like I an remember, idiot. I remember Suicide Silence played there one night, and... I was in the pit, and it was so fucking God, I crazy. Hate that band. Oh, I love them. Of course you do. I heard you their singer. I garbage. heard their singer died. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, well, you know what they say: <laughs> you only live once. <laughs> <laughs> um, they. Uh, I remember being in the pit, and I, it, it was getting crazy. It's the first time ever some guy hit me perfectly in my pee hole. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been punched directly on my pee hole before and i remember that was the first <laughs> night it ever only only night it ever happened were you drinking that evening? no you couldn't drink there oh you couldn't no but no, like lame. i don't know if his knuckle like just like lined up right but he punched me right in my pee hole and it was the weirdest feeling i've ever felt in my life besides like i don't know getting punched in the armpit did you ever get punched in the armpit that shit i sucks. can't say that i have getting punched in the armpit is the worst fucking thing in the world like if anyone ever jumps you just start like punching them in the armpit they'll run <laughs> it is the weirdest. i always worst. liked your other solution Take all your clothes off. Start waving your dick around. Yeah, just try to hump them. <laughs> <laughs> if anything else, it'll chase them off. I always thought that. Like if if like I like like all these like five dudes like trying to like jump me, I would just get my clothes off and just try to rub my dick on them. Hopefully they'd run. Uh, Derek Messiah says once the replay is posted, send us the link. We'll share it everywhere. Hey, no problem, man. We uh, we're just glad you're coming in and having a good time. We love it when the bands join us. You guys always have uh, cool shit to say. Yeah, it, and it always gets Casey started on on war stories. <laughs> and uh, like, like uh, Jay said too, if you ever have like a new album coming out or anything, and you want to be the band of the week again, we'll do that. Yeah, just let us know, man. You know how to get in touch with us. Uh, Twitter is usually the way, or you can always uh, shoot us an email. That goes for anybody who wants to get in touch with us for any reason. You can always shoot or us an email. Us. <laughs> yeah, I like to be touched. Openly hostile opinions at gmail dot com. Uh, all our contact links, I'm pretty sure, are posted on OpenlyHostileOpinions.com, too. So you can yeah. go there. Yeah. Check it out. I don't know why I'm pointing. It's not like I'm going to remember to put anything on the screen. I fucking forget to put shit in the show notes all the time, even after I say, hey, I'm going to put this in the show notes, and I don't. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's because we are horrible at this. <laughs> you know, we really are, but we've been doing it so long. Like, we're good at the talking part, but the actual production part, we suck at. Yeah, I just, I don't know, like, we just started this, like, we're, Jay's like, hey, you want to start a podcast? I'm like, yeah, I don't know what the fuck we're going to do, but sure. <laughs> like, oh, whatever you do, though, any of you guys, don't go back and watch our first, like, 10 episodes. Man, they're, they're garbage. They're god fucking awful. They're god awful. I don't know, looking at this, though, we have, like, 174 followers, I guess that's not bad. Uh, and I wanted to share something with you, speaking of which, I, I was doing a little shilling on social media again, trying to drum up some followers, because that's what I do, and... We got a compliment, and I'm going to give her a shout out here because a compliment she, on what YouTube? Uh, no, no, somebody, somebody on Twitter who's a big fan of podcasts, huh. Nicole Brettenbaugh, I believe it is. Whoa, that is a name. Well, she's Thank not Nicole Brettenbaugh. She's not from this country. Just makes you want to go Brettenbaugh. I want to say she's from <laughs> Germany. Ah, yes, yeah. she lives in Germany. Germany. Yeah. So Nicole from Germany gave us a wonderful compliment. She says, "Are you doing this from a studio?" It sounds amazing if it's not inside a studio. <laughs> what? Right. After all the audio issues we had in our early days, man. I know, dude. We had so many bad issues. The very first episode, we didn't even think of like the audio being good at all. <laughs> and we didn't put we any... had the microphones near our faces. Yeah. And there's just this we echo. We thought they were far more powerful there's than they this, were. Yeah, there's this horrible echo. And we finally put, like, stuff like carpet, egg crate in the room. And then the very next episode, it was, like, night and day. We're like, oh, maybe we should have done that. The sound was great, but the, uh, the video kept it cutting out. Anyway, I, I responded and told her that we call it our studio, but it's just a spare bedroom in your house. She goes, ingenious. The sound is impressive. So I wanted to give, give Nicole from Germany a shout-out. We really appreciate that compliment. <laughs> we fought so hard to get this audio correct. God, whoever that is is very nice. She is, like, well, if I was rich, I would hire her to stand next to me all day and just give me compliments. You know why? Because <laughs> she's not American. I know, dude. American. Every Americans other country. Are such Look how people. cool Dark Messiah here I is, know. who I assume is Steven. Is it Steven? <laughs> Uh, you'll have to shoot me out of yes. Uh, that's who I've been talking to from Dark Messiah. But anyway, uh, 
See, see how cool they are. I know. Dude. They're not American. <laughs> Americans we are suck. such assholes. We're assholes. And 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 that's the thing. I don't know. It's a bot. No, it's not. It's the band of the week, Tigger. <laughs> where the hell are you? Tigger's like it's a bot. Jesus Christ, Tigger, where have you been? I literally talked to this lady first off. The the. If we're talking about Dark Messiah, they're the band of the week. If we're talking about Nicole from Germany, it's not a bot because I physically talked to her. <laughs> you physically flew to Germany and talked to her? No, I talked to her on fucking Twitter. Oh, so this is Stefan. Jonathan Steven, and I, I are sitting here laughing our asses off. Very entertaining. Well, great. Hey, sub- subscribe to us, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks for uh, enjoying uh, This is what we do. Banter. <laughs> Every freaking Tuesday we do this shit. Um, Winnipeg, Winnipeg. I forget which coast that is in Canada. I've... Sorry. I just know where Niagara Falls is. <laughs> and I think Toronto's like mid Canada, isn't it? Isn't, uh, isn't Toronto like near Michigan? No, and shit no, Toronto's like that? east. Oh, is it? Yeah. See, I don't know. That's why I just know where Niagara Falls is because it's like the only part of Canada I've ever been to. I got to figure out where Winnipeg is. I, f- I fucking forget. Um, it's I actually, in Manitoba. I know that much. I actually play video games where I used to with this guy from Canada, and he lives far, far east coast. Um, on an island called Victoria. I think it's called Victoria Island. Yeah, yeah. Um, And he says they have a shortage of men on this island. And he says women outnumber men like 10 to 1, I think, or something he said. I'm like, dude. <laughs> like, we, we are in the middle. Okay, so you're you're in the middle. Um, Yeah, well, we do this show for at least the next two weeks. We do it at 9 p.m. Eastern time, which I assume you're in Central time, so it'd probably be 8 o'clock. Uh, and then we're moving back to our uh, 8 o'clock slot Eastern time, which would be 7 o'clock your time. So if you want to keep joining in with us, we would yeah, appreciate it. We'd appreciate it. Uh, Hazy78 says, MJ had people saying nice things to him all the time. He's dead now. Um, <laughs> okay, then. Good point. Well, thanks for raining on our fucking parade. And um, uh, my wife's giving me a bunch of shit for my comment, where, as I probably deserve where it. Where it gets colder than Mars. Oh fuck yeah, Canada, dude! The Canada cold, gets cold as fuck. The coldest I ever been was when I was in Canada, and I thought I was gonna die. We went to Niagara Falls, and I was like, "Well, since we're here, we might as well go and see the falls." We were walking towards it. The wind blew so hard; it was so cold. I opened my mouth; it went down my throat, and I almost died. Like I'm not joking. <laughs> I, I choked. Died. I choked. It like froze my lungs, and I was like, "Colin, I can't breathe!" And like I fell over; and I almost died. It's it was, probably all the <laughs> cigarette smoke. Probably. probably ruined your lungs. Probably. I can't wait till I'm older and I'm like fucking that 80 year old guy standing on the porch and like I have to talk with one of those electronic. Hello. <laughs> mm, hello. And I'm like yelling at kids to get off my lawn and like calling them whippers. Mm, you damn kids need to get <laughs> off of my lawn. And like I have a little trachea thing that's like shooting juice out of it. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude! You know what? I just realized we were supposed to talk about our our sponsor like a half an hour ago. Well, we got two minutes left, so go ahead. <laughs> I should probably go ahead and yeah, do that. Get that done. <laughs> oh hell! I'm not even prepared. Our sponsor, as it has been for the last few weeks, is of course Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is a VPN service which will protect you from prying eyes on the internet, keep your credit card information safe. And when you're sitting there slumming it at the uh, Starbucks uh, Wi-Fi trying to pay your bills online, definitely, definitely want a VPN because you never know who's spoofing your shit. Spoofing. I like that they're, word. They're spoofing that Make shit. Sure go, spoofing. You connect to the wrong Wi-Fi, somebody's open Wi-Fi network, you never know who's looking into your shit. But as long as you have a VPN, you're protected. Plus, with that uh, rotten cum stain, who's the head of the FCC, who managed to... Uh, <laughs> What's his name again? <laughs> uh, Ajit Pai. Jesus. Uh, he, he fucking, you know, him and his cronies decided to, to repeal net neutrality, although they are they are testing that in Congress right now. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. If you don't want to let your ISP do some bullshit with your traffic, you need a VPN. So if you want to sign up for a great VPN and help us out in the process, go to ohonet.pw slash ohovpn. That address again, ohonet.pw slash ohovpn. If you sign up through that link, you'll help us out and you'll get some uh, VPN service. And it's cheap. It, at, at its most expensive, it's less than $7 a month. And you get the peace of mind of knowing everything is protected. And if you uh, sign up for quite a ways in advance, it gets as low as, I think, $3. Come on, you can't you can't afford not to have it. Yeah, that's cheap. <laughs> that's cheap. That's ah. cheap. That's cheap as shit. <laughs> uh, Dark Messiah says, "Shit, man, I drink Slurpees in the middle of winter." 
Yeah, yeah. When I was looking around, no one else had a problem with it. I was the only one dying. <laughs> is it spelled Oho? <laughs> no, it is not. I will post it. No. we No hoes won us. <laughs> actually, I don't even... Yeah, actually, we do have a lot of female viewers. Yeah, we actually do. I don't for know the, why. Yeah, for the kind of shit that we talk about, we actually have a lot of female viewers, you, and I don't get it. <laughs> you think it would be a bunch of stoned college kids? I know, but it's like... It's so funny to me. I was like, are we, like, women-friendly? <laughs> I don't fucking No, know. we're not. It's just the women who follow us, I think, for the most part. Yeah, I guess. I don't know, but whatever. But, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, we had two minutes left, uh... That's it for us today. Uh, we want to thank Dark Messiah again for coming on. You guys were great, man. Thanks for sticking yeah, around. Yeah, really. We, we love it when the bands come in. I think our fans generally dig it, too. Yeah. Um, thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, Tigger, I still have your gas can and your shirt to give back to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep I keep forgetting to drop it off at your house. I'm sorry, Tigger. Didn't you have his jacket forever, too? That's I have the his... main way he gets in touch with you when you have his shit but, is through this show. But see, the thing is, <laughs> is like I'm really good at giving things back to people, but for some but reason, not Tigger. But for some reason, I keep forgetting with Tigger. I just, I, I'm sorry, Tigger. I got your your diesel gas tank, and I got your shirt to give back to you. I'm so sorry. I'll give it back to you soon. Uh, my car died. I have to get it jumped. I'm gonna try to jump it after the show, but it's hard because Jay's car might get stuck trying to jump it. So I'll. Yeah, that reminds it. me. I'm gonna try to jump Casey's truck before I go home, Amanda. <laughs> so don't don't wonder where I'm at. I don't think you're gonna be able to. I think you're gonna get stuck. It's all tore up and shit there. Well, we'll see if maybe we can push your truck a little bit back or something see what we can do yeah but uh, anyway uh dark messiah he says it was an honor well we were glad to have you hey you know what i've been proposing this to a few of the bands of the weeks so if you're ever going tour down through this way you should stop and we'll have a live band that would be cool how are we gonna fit everyone in there right back here <laughs> Dude, we should just have them set up and actually play oh yeah that's the plan that's the plan see, this is why i wish we call were me play. when you get stuck well if you're already gonna be around why don't you just come down here and help us for a minute <laughs> um <laughs> See, that's why I want to be rich so we can afford a studio and have, like, I would have bands play all the time. Oh, no, dude, it would be great. We'll just sit them right behind us. Yeah. There's more room here than you think there is. <laughs> like, I, I want to get the band from Star Wars. Like, the band that plays... <laughs> yes. They're, they're puppets, Casey. <laughs> no. Dark, Dark Messiah says, holy shit, that would be a blast. Seriously, I've been asking a couple of our bands this week. I tried with Hail Sagan, but they're too fucking big to care about us. Yeah, like, I just... I want a big studio so I can have that band from Star Wars at the cantina that always plays... You know what? It'd be like that uh, Two Minutes to Late Night show I was hawking a couple of weeks ago uh -huh. where they have uh, they have Mutoid Man <laughs> as, their, as, their, as their band. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, but uh, I love that band too. Thanks Music again, Dark Messiah. You guys were great. Uh, like we said, um, we will be back Tuesday, same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> See y'all later. See Thanks a lot. Hey, have a good one. This has been the Openly Hostile Opinions podcast. <laughs>